December 6, 2021. Good evening, televiewers, and thanks for joining us for the first edition of our 6 p.m. English news this week over the Republican television. Let's begin right away with our headlines. Due to the growing insecurity concerns in Boya subdivision, the Great Sopo Water and Light Development Committee, under the leadership of Molua Smith Beke, an illustrious son of Fako who resides in the United States of America, has thought it wise to give back and support his communities by offering them solar lamps. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, over the weekend while handing over 10 trucks to the Sodo Cotton Company, called on the workers to work hard in promoting production and cotton and put in use the materials donated by the Head of State, His Excellency Paul Beer. Some delegates and presidents of Regional League have reaffirmed their support to the incumbent president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Sedu Mbombon Joya. This action took place over the weekend in Garoa. Those were our headlines. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Government ministers have all presented the 2022 roadmap to the Finance and Budget Committee of the National Assembly, during which they defended their budget allocations to their various ministries. After facing the committee members at the conference center, our reporter caught up with some ministers who highlighted their 2022 project. Let's now take a listen to the Minister of Post and Telecommunication. The Minister of Communication and the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, carefully selected by Bertrand Tita. For us, uh, first of all, we are going to continue what we have done since to assure the, tran the, tran the digital transformation of our country. But the main project will be the exploration of our um, Digital Innovative Center, which is a very adequate environment for startups to innovate, to move from a simple idea to uh, a digital enterprise. And we also we are also going to reinforce uh, uh, campus so that campus can really be a key actor in the development. As you heard, uh, we have a project of. 4 billion, 348 million uh, because of the circumstances uh, because we could not have a uh, more important budget. We understand that. And uh, we'll try to do with what we have. Well, we will focus on the uh, intensification of our traditional mission which is to uh, promote the image of that uh, approach so that people know what the room is and uh, they should normally look at the room as a country uh, not only which is democratic but with um, a very bright future and uh, we enhance all the uh, achievements of the government, which are quite uh, uh, remarkable in all the fields. So our vision will be to promote the world possible. And also, I think um, we will also, because we are uh, from some few months. Now we will have uh, the after. Of course, our uh, duty will be uh, to make sure that uh, this event is uh, well, uh, uh, is, will take place in Gabon in good conditions. We really want to achieve to complete the 1,625,000, the 200,000 of uh, Northwest Boya and Lalinda. We also wanted to bring in 
an innovative way to construct houses because the gap is two million. So we need to put with shelter in place a factory to support the head of state to accommodate Cameroonians. We also have to continue with uh, highway, Simalen Highway, who will finalize the financement of uh, uh, urban section of this highway, and uh, we will continue with uh, mobility in city, with the road in our city, with the cleaning of our cities. So we are engaged. Due to the growing insecurity concerns in Boya subdivision, the Great Sopo Water and Light Development Committee, under the leadership of Molua Smith Beke, an illustrious son of a FACO who resides in the, in the United States of America, has thought it wise to give back and support his communities with solar lamps. In an event to launch the donation process, the beneficiaries assembled at the Great Sopo Chiefs a Palace. We have details with our Southwest Regional Correspondent, Prudencia Besem. In order to reinforce security in Boya subdivision, some villages have received 80 solar lamps from the Great Super Water and Light Development Committee under the leadership of Muluwa Simit Beke, FACO Indigenous Residents in the United States. The villages which benefited from this largest are Great Sopo, Sopo Likoko, Bokwai, Sumol Sopo, Buasa Likombe, Likoko Membia, Bokwango, Loa Bojongo, and Bokoko. Chief Etina Monono of Great Sopo, speaking on behalf of his peers and subject, welcomed the largest and equally encouraged others to emulate such initiatives which are geared towards developing FACO communities. It is a very laudable initiative. And I, as a chief of Great Support, I am so happy that one of our sons has decided that he will help his village, his villages, not just villages, to make sure that this insecurity, the insecurity is reduced. Because with lights being everywhere, it automatically reduces the number of thefts that will be happening in the village. So I want to encourage also others who are in uh, America, Germany, Britain, India, wherever, that they should benchmark with our son what he has done to improve their villages, not just great support. Should improve their villages because this is going to improve the status of great support considerably. And it's thanks to him. And as you all know, those of you who are in the committee, he has promised that he will do some more. My word to the various villages is that please handle this lamps with care. Make sure that they are not destroyed. Meanwhile, the villagers expressed your attitude to the donor. Yeah, actually, I would say that on behalf of my community, I'm very grateful because it's one of the exercises which are very unexpected from us, that we are found it a reality. And having our children over there to do a thing of such, at least the joy in us is more than what we can express. So I will go home to tell my people what I have seen, what I have seen and what I have received. And to see that we have them, the, the, we have the donation properly used as required by the donor. It should be noted that this is the first phase of the donation and installation exercise of the solar lamps with the objectives of the Great Support Water and Light Development Committee to see that all FACO villages have boreholes and lights before the end of 2022. The sustainable management of our forests is of great importance. This was agreed during a workshop aimed at cooling participants on the necessity to manage our forests. We have details with uh, Tabby Clarkson. A three-day workshop aimed at mapping strategies to secure forest has ended with an appeal, that of making our forests beneficial. To local populations. Uh, the main objective of the project is to reduce uh, greenhouse gases uh, through investments, actually, through promoting uh, investment opportunities for all stakeholders. All stakeholders, I mean the government, uh, the government, I mean the central government, and also the deconcentrated government officials, but also the decentralized government officials also. Uh, of course, we're talking of, sort of the civil society organizations, indigenous and local population, 
uh, women, uh, international organizations, and of course um, the uh, sub-regional African sub-regional organization. So the project actually it's uh, more or less the first uh, objective, as I said, is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to facilitate the development. Cameroon, like many sub-Saharan countries, have forests that can be exploited to the fullest. And to participants at the workshop drawn from various ministries, forests are underway for its sustainable management of the role of the forest in the stabilization of the global climate. So by doing this, it gives opportunity to countries like Cameroon to valorize that role, uh, to valorize all what uh, the sustainable management of the forest in our, our country is bringing to the stabilization of the global climate. With this project, it becomes a, 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 a concrete thing through which Cameroon will intensify its agriculture, will uh, uh, modernize its agriculture, will uh, valorize the quantity of carbon that uh, is not going to the atmosphere, will valorize the increase of the carbon stock of our forests, and this will give uh, to Cameroon uh, an opportunity to have the finance coming from carbon and this money can be used or will be used to accelerate, to improve the uh, sustainable development of our country. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, and other partners have promised to do their best in the management of forests, a thing which the civil society highly appreciates. I think for the civil society, um, it's very important already to take into account the gender issues. It's very important that um, communities, um, indigenous people, and women and the youth are part of the implementing partners, uh, organizations. But I also hope that um, civil society organization will be not only uh, taken as contributors, but also in the designing of uh, or the finalization of the activities, in the monitoring of the implementation, and also, of course, uh, evaluating all the impact that could be generated from the, from the implementation of the project. Forest is important, a very important instrument in a developing country like ours. So all actors are called upon to put hands on deck to make the sustainable management of our forest a priority. As you heard in one of our lead stories, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, has called on Sodo Cotton to promote the production of cotton and put in use the materials donated by the Head of State, His Excellency Paul Bia. He was speaking over the weekend in Garwa while handing over 10 trucks to the company for easy transportation and to boost production. The transitor has an in-depth in the following report. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, proceeded on Friday, December 3, 2021, to the retrocession of 10 hook lift trucks as part of the court emergency planned for the acceleration of economic growth, of which the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Beer, puts a particular emphasis. Cotton cultivation is the main economic pillar of the North region that supports more than 200,000 farming families, representing more than 2 million people. It is in this context that Sodokoton has benefited from significant materials. Here in Java, to hand over uh, 10 trucks for the ground transportation of seed cotton. This is a grant of the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia, to help uh, Sodokoton to improve his, uh, his capacity of uh, transportation. You know that uh, the transportation of seed cotton is very important uh, because we have to finish the season because the rainy season. The minister challenged Sodo Cotton officials to make a good use of it for the well-being of farmers. Rains on the seed cotton, uh, the quality of the cotton decrease. That's why the hand, uh, our hand off of this uh, uh, trucks is very important for uh, the competitivity of the cotton sector 
in our country. Following the enthusiasm of cotton producers, the head of state through the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development is resolutely committed to boost cotton production. It is therefore imperative for all actors in the production chain to continue to improve the performance of the company to achieve emergence by 2035. <laughs> We remain in Garwa, where the population of Garwa 3 subdivision in the north region have expressed satisfaction and extend their appreciation to the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia. This took place over a day weekend during an occasion where the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, handed over some products to boost local production in the area. We have Betran Tita once more. The population of Sangwa in the Garwatiri subdivision were particularly happy and satisfied with the presence of the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, who donated important farm products made up of seeds of corn, a hooks of rice, and many others. This important donation from the ministry is part of the head of state's policy to support rural population. Minister Gabriel Bayrobe did not fail to extend the head of state's greetings to the population. I'm the head of state for uh, uh, permanently thinking about uh, them. You know that the uh, youth employment is a permanent concern of the head of state. That's why he sent us here to put in place a, a you know, a complete a uh, complete uh, agro-pastoral center for uh, building capacity of young people. Uh, we have here a unit process of rice. We have here a unit for calibration of uh, maize seed. You have here uh, a, ex an experimental irrigation for producing uh, uh, goods in all the time during the year. We think that uh, in this area, the agriculture is really on the way of uh, modernization, and we are proud to be involved in this uh, activity. Thank you. This gesture equally falls with the commitment of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to promote the third generation agriculture dear to President Paul Beer, who has asked Cameroon to consume more of made in Cameroon products. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, you're watching the 6 p.m. English News Overcome This Television. Let's now talk sport where some delegates and presidents of regional league have reaffirmed their support to the incumbent president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Sedum Bombon Joya. These delegates and presidents met over the weekend in Garwa and signed a memorandum to rally behind Prince Sedum Bombon Joya during the December 11th foot elections. We have details with Bertrand Tita. The outpouring of solidarity and support was manifested to the incumbent president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Fika Foot, by all delegates from the northern regions and the presidents of the regional leagues who came to represent their various delegates. These representatives came from the central, northwest and west regions of the country. The president of the Northwest Regional League presents Seju Mbombo Njoya as the best candidate for the 11th December race. We've come here today to support our candidate, Seju Mbombo Njoya, who is one of the best and the strongest president so far. I believe I, I came in back as a president. And I want him to come back so we should continue what we, we could not uh, finish. And uh, I think we've been there, we know what is happening, and we can easily manage and then finish what is left for us undone. So we are here, I'm here on behalf of the Northwest region, and to say the whole of Northwest region is behind our candidate, Sedu Bomunjoya. Also, the president of the electoral club, the Honorable Mbapodli Pod Robert, equally extended his unending support to Sedu Mbombo Njoya. Someone who knows very well the environment of football in Cameroon. 
is a question of managing a, an institution. It's not a question of playing. What is supposed to play football, we know very well that we have the field. But now that we have to organize, manage, lead our young generation, we know very well that the only person who can do it and have the support of uh, all the delegates taking in consideration his way of doing things, the real person here is Prince Seidu Bumbunjua. And in total, the delegates from six regions are committed to cast their vote come December 11th to their candidate who is the incumbent president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Sedu Mbombo Njoya. We remain in sport where Cameroon's lone representative at the African Continental Interclub competition this season, Cotton Sport of Garwa, are through to the group stage of the CAF Confederation Cup. The boys of Abubaka Sulemanu beat Naodibo FC of Mauritania two goals to nil at the reunification stadium in Douala on December 5th, 2021. We have details with Betran Tita. After a zero all tie in the way leg game between Cotton Sport of Garoua and FC Noabimbu of Mauritania last weekend, the lone Cameroonian representatives at the Continental Interclub Football Jamboree had their backs on the world. The return leg game at the Douala Reunification Stadium was therefore a must win for Cotton Weavers for their ambition of processing to the group stage to become a reality. The boys of Abubakar Suleimanu passed on their visitors in the first segment of the game and were rewarded with the first goal at the 23rd minute of play thanks to a powerful header from Captain Sebu Maru benefiting from a beautiful cross from Tombi Alemi. Some minutes later, Cotton Sport playmaker Tombi Alemi provoked a penalty after an incisive incursion into the penalty box of the Mauritanians. Captain Swaibu Maru stepped forward and coldly converted it into a goal, making it 2 0 before half time. The second half was more challenging as the Mauritanians came back more determined to upset the result and secure a draw. Unfortunately, all their attempts failed to yield the desired fruits. Cotton Sport even threatened to increase tally, but the game ended 2 0 for the Cameroonian side. Sunday's win means Cotton Sport of Garoua are now through to the group stage of the CAF Confederation Cup this season and can dream to go beyond the semi finals where they stopped last season. More, by qualifying to the group stage for the second consecutive time, Cotton Sport of Garoua has succeeded to ameliorate Cameroon's ranking at the CAF Club rankings, thereby permitting the country to line up four consecutive next season two at the CAF Champions League, two at the CAF Confederation Cup. For young entrepreneurs to benefit in financial assistance that will help boost their projects, there are steps to follow. Let's now take a listen to Christel Nopodem, a business consultant speaking in the following excerpt, selected by Anne Omeko. There are five steps that the young, the young people have to follow. The first one is to, to be identified by the, 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 the ministry. For that they have to register themselves on the website. And the, the address is www.ong-cameroon.cm and after this step uh, the ministry will know exactly who is recognized as a young uh, people or a youth. Uh, the second step after that is that the, the young have to apply for an economic uh, program, economic financing. They have to deposit a project. This project will be analyzed by the, the ministry uh, uh, response staff dedicated for that. And after this second step, the, the, the young will be called 
to know if the, the, the project is, um, the, is right or not to, to be eligible for the, the, the financing. If yes, the, 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 the fourth step will be that the, the young will be called for the, the project to be to be arranged, I can say, for it to, to, to fit with what, how, how, how many money we can inject in the project. After the fourth step, we have the final one, where the, the, the steering committee of the ministry, we have a validation session to, 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 decide, to decide which project will be financed. And if the project is selected by them, the, the young will be called for him to enter in a final, final process where we have um, a, a training program, also financing uh, awareness um, program to, for them to be ready to be a real entrepreneur. That's the, four, the, the five uh, steps that they have to follow. And on to news out of the country, the Gambia's incumbent president, Adama Barrow, has vowed to strengthen the country's tourism-dependent economy amid the coronavirus pandemic following the re a re-election on Sunday that placed him in the lead with 53% vote. We have this story and more in the following report. Gambia's incumbent president Adama Barrow appeared on cause for re-election on Sunday as partial results from most districts placed him in the lead after Saturday's crucial polls for the young democracy where he received around 53% votes with nearest rival Usainu Dabo on 28%. Barrow, who ousted dictator Yaya Jame five years ago, is well ahead of his main challenge Usainu in results published by the Electoral Commission for almost 40 districts out of 53 nationwide. All the presidential candidates vowed to strengthen the country's terrorism-dependent economy amid the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, the 2016 election that removed Jame from power after 22 years saw Gambians go from fear to delight. Many are still not satisfied with the progress the nation has made. Many Gambians want certainty that the new leaders will bring tiny West African nation of about 2.4 million towards peace and justice. The death toll following the eruption of the highest volcano on Indonesia's most densely populated island of Java has risen to 13, with seven people still missing, officials said on Sunday, as smoldering debris and a thick mud hampered search efforts. Mount Semeru in Lumanjang district in East Java province spilled thick columns of ash more than 12,000 meters into the sky and searing gas and lava flowed down its slopes after a sudden eruption on Saturday triggered by heavy rains and several villages blanketed with fallen arch. Transportation Ministry spokesperson Adita Irawati said her office issued a notice on Saturday for all airlines to avoid routes near the volcano. She added that the flight operations are still running as scheduled and authorities will continue to monitor the situation. It should be recorded here that the last time Semeru erupted was in January and there were no casualties. Indonesia, an archipelago of more than 270 million people, is prone to earthquakes and volcano activities because it sits along the Pacific Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped series of fault lines. Ladies and gentlemen, that news out of the country takes us to the end of our 6 p.m. English news. But before we leave you, a recap of our major stories. Due to the growing insecurity concerns in Boya subdivision, the Great Sopo Water and Light Development Committee, under the leadership of Molua Smith Becker, an illustrious son of Fako who resides in the United States of America, has started wise to give back and support his communities with solar lamps. 
The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, over the weekend while handing over 10 trucks to the Sodo Cotton Company called on the workers to work hard in, pro in promoting production of cotton and put in use the material donated by the Head of State, His Excellency Paul Bia. Some delegates and presidents of regional league have reaffirmed their support to the incumbent president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Sedu Mbombonjoya. This action took place over the weekend in Igarawa. Desiree Trezor Bonnet will be with you when it's exactly 8 p.m. for news in the French language. But until then, do stay tuned to interesting programs over the Republican television. Have a blessed evening.